We are election day, just one day away. The candidates not letting any time go to waste. Both President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden still making their case to voters. I want to say good morning to Cleo Green, who joins us from our newsroom and who is following the campaign trail. Given how many early votes there have been, Cleo, I'm curious how many more undecideds there are out there for them to sway. Yeah, Mark, you know, up until the last minute, this is really the last full campaign day. President Donald Trump, Joe Biden, they've been very busy over the weekend, some making us some trending moments on social media. So where are they today on the campaign trail? Let me walk back here. President Donald Trump has several, several stops. Uh, he's going to begin this morning in Pennsylvania, Traverse City, Michigan, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Remember, this is a city that made national headlines following several protests after the shooting of Jacob Blake. And then he's going to head back to Michigan in Grand Rapids. Joe Biden, he's going to be in Cleveland this morning. Remember, this is a state that Trump won by eight percentage points back in 2016. And then he's going to be spending some time in Pennsylvania. He's been pretty busy there over the weekend in Philly. We have some video from there. Biden, he campaigned there yesterday, holding three events across the state as well. Now, PA is a state that former Vice President Joe Biden is hoping to turn blue this time around. And Biden, well, he continues to slam the president's handling of the coronavirus. Imagine where we'd be if this president just wore a mask instead of mocked it from the beginning. It's time for Donald Trump to pack his bags and go home. All right, now on Sunday, President Donald Trump, he held five rallies in five states hitting Michigan, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and Iowa. This is a state both candidates need to win. Political experts say he's playing defense in states that he won in 2016, but this comment here, um, it's coming with some raised eyebrows. We should know the result of the election on November 3rd. That's the way it's been. All right, so this morning, political experts are saying we're really going to have to pack our patience come Election Day because this could potentially turn out to be an election week. Chris, I'll send it to you. Cleo, out here in Collin County, like the Dallas County's American Airlines Center, they've turned their sporting arena, the Allen Events Center, they've turned it into a voting location. It was very popular during early voting. It'll be open again on election night. And as you can see from all the campaign signs behind me, some hotly contested races in Collin County, something that hasn't always been the case in the past. Collin County is kind of considered a bellwether of sorts when it comes to the political climate in the suburbs. As recently as six years ago, some Republican candidates did not even have Democrat challengers to run against because it was so deeply red. But that has changed big time this year. Not only are Democrats running, but they think they've got a real shot to flip the seats blue. Part of the reason is based on the early voting numbers where the county was one of the first in the, sit in the state to exceed their total vote total in 2016. 62% of registered voters have voted and the Texas Tribune reports nearly one third of those voters are voting for the first time. And there are some key seats up for grabs, including the county seat in Washington with the House of Representatives. Incumbent Van Taylor is being challenged by Democrat Lulu Cycli. And in the Texas House, Representative Jeff Leach is taking on Lorenzo Sanchez and Representative Matt Shaheen versus Sharon Hirsch is a rematch of sorts from two years ago when Shaheen topped Hirsch by just two points. The nationwide races have also seen the gap get narrowed here in Collin County. Back in 2012, Mitt Romney in his race for president won Collin County by 32 percentage points. Then four years ago, Donald Trump carried the county by 17 points. Then in the Senate race just two years ago, Ted Cruz won Collin County, but by that narrowing margin, just six points over Beto O'Rourke. Mark, back to you. All right, thank you, Chris. All those election signs behind him, uh, certainly an indicator of how contested this race has been. Want to check in with our live poll this morning. We've been asking you which way you think Texas will vote when it's all said and done. And right now, about two thirds of you say blue. You think Texas goes Democratic. Those numbers have been pretty consistent this morning. I want to thank the uh, more than 600 of you that have voted. You can continue to weigh in using our app this morning. Tashara? Wow, 600 people weighing in this morning. That's some good stuff. All right, you guys, voting, we know it. It's so important. Some rideshare companies are going out of their way to give voters to the polls. No excuses, all right? Tomorrow, Lyft is offering 50% off one ride up to $10 to any polling location or even to a drop box. Just use the code 2020 vote. Uber also offering 
50% off a round trip to the polls and possibly the best deal is from Dallas based Alto support local right voters who ride with Alto can get two free rides up to 15 bucks each one to the polls one to get you back home. All you got to do is use their promo code that same one vote 2020 hurts the rental car company by the way giving away a free day when you book two or more days with the pickup day being today or tomorrow. Mark I mentioned this to you earlier. I'm also sending out information about uh, public transportation options for folks who needed free rides to the polls trying to get folks out. Thank you to Shara six.